We are looking at day one of sea animals and our um, team cooperation goal is going to be to complete tasks. So think for a minute about what that might look like and what that would sound like. Well, when you complete tasks, that means you are finishing things completely and not halfway, and you are just checking to make sure that you are staying on top of things. Okay, and we are still working with questioning. Our word power is irregular vowel patterns. And then in writing, we're gonna be writing an informative paragraph. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna rate some new vocabulary words. So you're gonna put a plus if you know it and a question mark if you're not sure. So we're gonna set up our vocabulary right now. So let me put this down here for you. Okay, so we're gonna set it up. We're gonna write vocab. So that's where we're gonna write our word. We're gonna put, um, I R to do our uh, first rating, and then you can one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so then we're just going to go through and draw those lines down. Okay, so our first word is mighty. So if you know the word mighty, you're gonna put a plus. If you're not sure, you're gonna put a question mark. I'm gonna put a question mark on all mine, but if you know it, go ahead and put a plus. Uh, the next word is grasp. Plus, if you know it, question mark. If you're not sure, then we have nab. Plus, if you know it, question mark. If you're not sure. Then we have feast, plus if you know it, question mark if you're not sure. Diet, plus if you know it, question mark if you're not sure. Drifting, plus if you know it, a question mark if you're not sure. Um, stringy, plus if you know it, question mark if you're not sure. And then the last one is escape. All right, let me share my screen here. So in this cycle, we're gonna read a book called uh, Sea Animals by Terrence Parker. As we read, we're gonna practice asking questions about information in the text. Asking questions helps check your understanding. Remember, good readers use questions to check their own understanding and the understanding of their classmates. So this text is informational text. And we're gonna use the um, T-I-G-R-R-S process to help find all the important facts um, about our story. I'm gonna come back to this. So, um, the first part is to figure out the topic of the book. I can do a few things to figure out the topic of a book. First, I could read the title. So if I go back and go, oh, it says sea animals. Sounds like the book will be about animals that live in the ocean. I know that seas and oceans are similar, but I can also look at the front cover and I could flip through the pages of the book and see if I find any more clues about the topic. I see a lot of pictures of sea creatures on, and on the cover of the book, I see jellyfish, whales, sharks, turtles, and crabs. I think the topic of the book is about animals that live in the ocean. If you were gonna buy a pet at a pet store, what kind of, or if you were gonna buy a fish, what kind of fish would you buy? Maybe you'd be the person who'd buy the shark. Okay, so now that we know the topic of the book is all about sea animals, we can move on to the second step of our T-I-G-R-R-S, which is the intent of the author. Well, this step tells us that we need to find, um, we need to figure out why the author wrote the book or what she wants us to learn from reading the book. When I look in page through, 
um, the book Sea Animals. I saw a lot of pictures of animals that live in the ocean. I think the author's intent tells me about animals that live in the ocean. When we read, we should look for information that tells us about animals that live in the ocean. Okay, so let's look at our next step. The G is for graphic organizer. When we read informational text, we use graphic organizers to help us sort information, important information. So the next step is to identify which organizer will we use as we read. Well, when I don't see anything about uh, comparing or contrasting in the text, mm, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of problems or causes and effects either. It seems like the text is full of main ideas and supporting details. So we're gonna be using an idea tree for this text. Um, we'll write down main ideas of the text in the circles on the idea tree, and then we will write details to support the main ideas. When we finish reading it, we'll be able to look back at our idea trees and see the most important information that we learned throughout the text. Okay, hey, let's go ahead and go over those vocabulary words. So you'll go ahead and go back down day one and fill that in. Mighty means strong. The mighty fighter won many boxing matches. Grasp, grasp means hold. I tried to grasp my dog's collar as he ran for the door, but he was too quick for me. Nab, nab means catch. The police wanted to nab the thief in the act. So they set up a trap to lure him to the bank. Feast. Feast means eat. I like to feast on sweet green grapes and cheese when it's snack time at home. Diet. Diet means food eaten. Carrots, lettuce, and other vegetables are a main diet of my pet rabbits. Drifting. Drifting means floating. My helium balloon was drifting away from me in the strong breeze. Stringy. Stringy means rope-like. The lost dog's fur looks stringy and dirty before we gave him a bath and cut it. Escape. Escape means get away from. The princess tried to escape the dragon's lair, but she couldn't without the help of a rescuer. Okay, so here I have, um, in this cycle, we're gonna continue to focus on questioning. Remember, questioning is an important reading strategy and is very useful in informational texts. Asking questions about the text helps you remember uh, main ideas and supporting details from the text. It's important to know how to ask a variety of questions about the text to help you and your classmates better understand what you're reading. Okay. So I'm gonna say two sentences that are very similar and I want you to tell me what's different about them. Here's the first. Monique lives on Elm Street. Now here's the second. Where does Monique live? How are they different? Right, the second sentence is a question. I would expect someone to answer me after I ask that question. What word helps you know that this sentence is a question? Well, yeah, it said, I said, where does Monique live? Where is a question word? Okay, we're gonna have to have a second video for this one. So I am gonna end and then I'm gonna make another.